Hi everyone, this is another video in the in-depth series looking at drafting film and different types of film. This one might be split into two, um, but we are going to start this one off with a side-by-side -side comparison of drafting film and Duralar. There's often a lot of confusion online and people buy Duralar thinking that they're buying the drafting film. They're both made by graphics, um, but the easiest way to think about it is the Duralar is what is known as their student grade, whereas the drafting film is more of the professional artist grade. Now, you can create beautiful works on the Duralar, um, and qualities-wise, it's fully archival, it's, it's polyester, it's, it's pretty much the same thing, it's just the coating, it's... Like I say, it's just referred to as the student grade. There's some things um, you can't do quite as well on the Duralar as you can on the film. Um, I've chosen the film today to demo on that's as close a match as possible. So as you can see, this is the weight here. Um, it's 0.005 micron. And that is what the Duralar is as well. And they're both double-sided matte film so both basically it's the film and both sides have been given the powder coating um, which is what then makes it the matte film otherwise it's a clear gloss film finish okay so what we are going to do on this video is we're going to do some little um, blending side by sides and comparisons using different brands of pencils as well and this will be like a double thing of one you'll see which pencils might work better. I want to also then push this on to being um, showing some of the subtraction techniques as well because I've got a feeling some are going to work better on the film um, as opposed to the Duralar. That's just a theory. I've never personally worked on the Duralar. I've always bought the film. So this will be, I've seen pictures of a side-by-side -side, um, of the layers and blending done film versus Duralar, but I've never seen a video done of it, hence why I'm doing this one. So when I say this is the student grade, um, basically it means that the film itself, double matte film, let's just call it drafting film and Duralar, that's the easiest way. So drafting film is known for... Um, Beautiful, vivid representation of colours, um, crisp, clear details, but it allows for very few layers. So the best comparison is, as far as I know, the Duralar gives less layers and hence slightly less blendability. With it being double matte, we can work both sides. So we're going to do some blending, um, do some vibrancy tests, um, compare the three types of pencils. And the pencils that I'm going to use today are going to be... We're going to use Derwent Lifast, we are going to use Prismacolor, and we are going to use Polychromos. So we've got a heavy, in theory, they're all wax and oil based, but we're using a heavy, popular in the US, wax based pencil, which is the Prismacolor. We're going to use, these are all artist quality, we're going to use the Polychromos, which is kind of known as the oil based pencil for the Faber Castell range, and we're going to use Derwent Lightfast, which to me is my smoothest, most blendable pencils that I have, and I use these a lot on their own on um, drafting film, but I also combine them with my Polychromos a lot as well. I was going to pull in the Luminance, but these three is what we're going to use for our demo today. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do, I've got pretty much the same colours um, selected here in my Lightfast, my Prismacolor and my Polychromos. So we're just going to do these first, I've actually got three lots of circles there. So we're actually just going to do like a blendability um, test on the paper or the films using those three types of pencils first of all. So I'll just do light fast at the top, then we'll do polychromos, then we'll do prismacolor. Um, and we'll see what results we've got, and then I'll carry on working them. I've got more film here, obviously, um, and then we'll do some subtraction techniques at the end, and also we'll work on the reverse. But I think the first thing to do is just keep an eye as well of how many layers we get down. So I will keep note of the layers. So I'll label it up on the camera for you anyway, but I've got the drafting film on the left, and I've got the Duralar on the right. Very light texture, so I'm going to hold my pencil about halfway up for this 
and I'm just literally gonna pop in a light layer I'll take it about two thirds of the way over okay I'm gonna do exactly the same on the other side and the sound there's actually a different sound to the pencil going down on the Duralar. That's really strange to start with. So this, I'll try and see if you can hear it on the film. So this felt slightly smoother already than this side. So I'm going to come in there with a red. I'm using colours, if you're out of interest, light fast. I'm using a mustard and I'm using a scarlet. So I'm just going to exactly the same light pressure. It's a standard pressure, what I call about a three to four on a scale of one to ten. Okay, do exactly the same here. I'm not going to keep it inside the circle, so that sounds completely different. Okay, so that's our first layer, so I'm going to come in again now. I'm also going to repeat this using black and white. So this on the left hand side, the film to me, is feeling grainier. This on the right is feeling smoother. And I can still hear a difference in the sound. Okay. So at the moment there's no visible difference. Now, I can see, I wonder if I could pick this up on the camera, I don't know if I can pick this up on the camera or not, let me just see, basically I've got, so there's a lot of oil in these pencils, I can see on the right hand side on the Duralar, I'm going to angle it and see if any of the light will pick it up, on the Duralar I'm seeing a huge amount of shine and oil on the surface, I'm not seeing that on the film on the left hand side. So that is something that's really visible to my eye now. I don't know why I'm trying to be neat. <laughs> And I can feel that slickness now on the right hand side as well on the Duralar. It's getting a lovely, lovely blend though. Okay. This is about the fourth time we're going in now. Okay, starting to get really slick over here. I'm struggling to get any more pigment down on the right hand side. Even, it's even shinier now. I'm really hoping you can see that reflecting on the camera. But the left hand side is not reflecting anywhere near as much. The left hand side is still lovely and dull. So I'm using a little bit more pressure now. Because now I know that the right hand side is losing its grip. I'm going to come in here and see if I can get any more pigment down. 
no, it's skidding around on the surface. So you can instantly see there six to eight layers on the right hand side and this is now all this is doing now is pushing the pigment that's down around. So I'm going to do one more layer over here and I can use quite a heavy pressure, same as I did with that yellow, the mustard as I came down over there then. And I'll just ease up my pressure. I could get more layers down over on this film on the left hand side though. Not a problem, I could definitely still get more layers down. And just to prove it, I'm just going to do one more layer over the top just to smooth that out. So, let's do the same over here. I'm going to come in, I'm going to press as hard as I can down this bottom area. Now, if I start to press as hard, coming up, all it's doing is kind of cutting through and dragging. It's like there's not, in, there's, there's not as much tooth. So the pencil on this side is gripping. The pencil on the film, on the um, Duralar, is skidding and cutting channels in through there. Nowhere near as smooth. So if you have bought Duralar, you can create similar effects, but you're not going to get as many layers so you are battling in comparison and I would say the colours actually come out a little bit more vivid on here a little bit more dull on the Duralar so let me just pick this up again I'm going to see if I can angle it again I'm hoping we get some light reflection what I could do is just switch my other lamp on a second let me just see if I can angle this so that the camera picks it up more Possibly, or possibly not. <laughs> it's worth a try. I might need something like a spotlight there. But you can definitely see, um, just from the application, there is a difference between the film and the Duralar. Okay, next up we are going to slide this all up. And we'll bring it down later to, co to a comparison, don't worry. Let me just get this lined up nicely. Don't like it when things aren't lined up perfect. There we go. <laughs> so film on the left, dual on the right. And this time we're going to go in and do exactly the same, but this time we're going to use the polychromos. Uh, the polychromos aren't quite as soft as the light fast that we used up here. Um, they are oil based and I'm using them because again, they're one of the pencils that I use the most. Um, I tend to use them on my film and then I use my softer pencils like my Lightfast or Luminance to drag the pigment out. So these give lovely, lovely coloration, great for instant detail. Um, anyway, let me just talk and work. So we're going to do exactly the same thing. And we're going to just compare, just to see if there's any difference with the lay down on the film, as opposed instantly smoother over on this side. I can hear it. Let's see if you can hear it. I'll turn the sound up. Yes, yeah, so normally I would use, lay down my colour with these polychromos and then drag the pigment around with my softer pencils. It's 
So once again I can see this side, the oil, everything is sitting on the surface over here, it's sinking down. So this is about a layer 7. This side is starting to get really slick now, so the dual is getting really slick. Everything's really shiny. I, I don't think I could cope with working on that surface. So now I'm going to press quite firmly. The only thing that's affecting this is I've got a little piece of cartridge paper underneath which has got my... um. just show this. My little stencil underneath, so it is giving me this little bit of texture that you can see is just the grain of that paper coming through. But it's not enough to um, influence the results of what I'm looking for in this test much. Okay, so I'm going to go once more, I'm going to press firmly, just to make sure we've fully saturated the colours. That's the ease off as I come down through. Yeah, so over here, it's not quite as much as up here with the light fast, but this is skidding, slipping. You should probably see some little bits of pigment just coming off there as well. A little bit just flew across there. So the pigment itself is kind of kind of coming away from the pencil, rather because there's no nothing to grip. There's no grip in behind from the um, tooth of the paper. The tooth of the paper's gone. To press nice and hard in through here. It's not giving smoothness at all. I mean, you might be able to use something like a blending tool to press it back down and drag it. Okay, so that is our um, polychromos. And pretty much the same comparison result as in the Duralar didn't allow for as many layers. I could have, I can carry on adding layers over on my film. They will continue to grip. They are not super shiny and slick, um, which means I could come in and like add some details as well. So yeah, the pigment is just kind of sitting on the surface more on that film, on the Duralar, sorry, than opposed to the film. And again, I'm getting that real shiny effect. If I just zoom out, you can just see the difference in the saturation as well. So you can see just how saturated that light fast is. Lovely and rich it is as well. Um, but the difference in colour saturation between and true colour between the drafting film on the left and the dual on the right it's just a little bit more dull on the right so if you if you I mean if you're doing animal portraits and fur and you don't want it quite as vibrant the dual will give that effect but we've got lots more to try out yet for example like the extraction techniques using our knife and our um, mono eraser as well to cut through these layers which we will do in a bit but the last test that we're going to do with the pencils for a comparison is exactly the same as we've done above there but this time we are going to use the Prismacolor and like I say, the user, reason I'm using the Prismacolor and I've got the canary yellow and a permanent red is because so many people use Prismacolor in the US let me just anchor that down there so exactly the same nice light pressure now these are going down really nicely I don't use Prismacolor on film or I haven't <laughs> So instantly, same pressure, but when I apply this on that Duralar, yes it sounds different again, but it's gone down a little bit brighter over on that side. Oh, 
There was another wonderful drawing inside the lines, colouring in inside the lines. So this has got the same paper underneath, so the, the, the texture that it's picking up underneath is the same grain. Can you see it seems to be picking it up more? This is this is staying smoother on this side. When um, I work on film I keep either a very smooth mount board underneath or a sheet of white or black uh, drafting film so that I don't get any tooth shining through or showing through any gr um, texture. But it is quite interesting how maybe it's the wax, I don't know. There's something in this pencil. Working on the Duralar side. So it's picking up. More of the texture of that paper underneath than it did with any of the other pencils. So these all feel really different. This I think is going to go really thick over on that side very fast. It's building up the... Um, I expected the Prismacolor being quite a thick opaque pencil to lay down much and saturate much more quickly than the Polychromos. I tend to think of my polychromos as being uh, the more translucent of my pencils. It's just catching on something. The edge of the film, let me just bump that across a little bit. There we go. Okay, so it looks like I will not be using my Prismacolor anytime soon on drafting film because I'm not actually the first layer was nice but now it's just okay so you're going to see this on the right hand side now the difference see how it's all clogging up because it's waxy up here when it's polychromous it was oil but more oil based probably more talc and everything in there as well it was coming off the bits of um, extra pigment you see there on my finger were falling off quite dry so you could brush them away. In here they're falling off but the wax seems to be making them stick to the surface and then they get pressed in. Not good. Okay so I'm going to press hard now. Blends nice. Really nice and smooth. That drags out really nice and smooth. So when you use a lot of pressure, so these might be good to work on top of the polychromos to drag that pigment around. Because <laughs> that is now given a smoother saturation compared to any of the other brands that we've used. Now over here, this is going to look a little bit of a mess. I just like the fact that we're doing this side by side. Can you see the bits of pigment all falling off? This is really hard to get anything down. It's... You can see the end, all my pencil strokes, you can see in here. I'm going to try and do a scan of this as well so you can see just what's going on there. It, if anyone looked close at the surface, this looks nice and smooth. This one over here just looks like scratchy, horrible, horrible marks in there. <laughs> um, but that gives you a really good idea, side by side, see how easy that is to erase, of um, Three different main brands of artist quality pencils 
side by side on drafting film on the left as opposed to the Duralo on the right. So I'm just going to zoom out. So you can see those. Okay. So yeah, this down here, I think you can see the some of the strokes. Let me zoom in on now. I'm going to move each one around and I'll say which one it is. We'll start at the top. Okay, so top left. That, so you can see the oils top left of, as an extra layer of the yellow gondone. And that was our Derwent Lightfast, which is a heavily blendable, um, mainly oil-based pencil. Same on the right. Less saturation, because we've got less layers, and it's not quite as smooth. So the left-hand side, that's our polychromos. Not much reflection or anything there, but on the right hand side it is reflecting, it is like it's the oils and everything just sitting on the surface more for that one. Coming down, can you see how heavily saturated that has gone? I mean that's our Prisma colour, which we, well, I expected that, um, and again it's because I've gone in with a really heavy layer at the end, but can you see the difference between the left and the right? The right hand side is just not blended smoothly at all. Um, so yeah, that was an interesting little glimpse, first of all, of that side-by-side -side comparison. So what I'm going to do now is oh, turn it over um, and just show that, you know, you can work on the back and just see if I can make this. I'm going to do just a yellow on the back of each one and then come back to you and show you. Um, I'll do yellow on the heart, on half of each one, so I'll cut it down like here and see if you can tell. I'll do yellow and red, and then I'll come back to you. So I'll flip over one, and I'll just show you what I am going to do, and then I will just do it and come back to you once they are all done. Okay. I'll take away the little stencil. We don't need that one now. So this is the reverse side. So if you can see the front side quite vivid, you flip it over and it's quite muted. It's quite nice actually. So this is where you can use this for something like backgrounds or places that you want a softer effect. And here you can see the lay down from the reverse side as well. So let me grab those light fast first of all. Um, so what I'm going to do is literally I'm going to come in and I'm just going to work down one half of that side. I'm going to work one side here. This instantly on the back again, it goes on really slick. It's like the difference between working almost going from smooth paper to a rough paper. Um, so this over here is smooth and slick. I guess we're trying to do a comparison of something in real life. So this is like smooth, like a shiny tomato. And this over here is almost like a, I don't know, like a cucumber skin. You know what I mean? It's a different difference between shiny skin and dull skin. That's, that's, that's the best way I can describe it. So I'm going to use some of my red down the bottom corner as well. And hopefully this should let me flip it over just to show. It to be more vivid and more saturated because we've used both sides of the film. I'll go into this more on a specific film um, footage showing different ways of working on film. This one's really more about just doing that direct comparison between the application of different pencils onto Duralar versus drafting film. So if I flip that over now, we should, in theory, have brighter, more saturation on one half of the sphere than the other. So let me just zoom that in. I can see it in reality. So 
I'm hoping it's going to show up on the film. So this is a way of working both sides. You can see here, this is the side that I've applied and you can keep on doing this. You could come in with like a black on the reverse as well, just to shade it down. Um, and the same here, it's just added more saturation. You can just see the line up through there and it's because we've used the same colors. If we took it down a darker shade, it would come through even more. Um, and I will demonstrate that, but that'll be in another demo. So I'm just gonna do exactly the same on the reverse as the other spheres. So you can see how saturated we can get the film and the Duralar. Okay, so that's our pencil down on the reverse of each of them. Light fast, polychromos and Prismacolor. Now, I noticed as soon as I went in on the reverse over here with the Prismacolor, it just went really slick and slidey straight away. So if you do not use a super, super light hand, you are not going to get very far um, on the Duralar. Um, you will get a lot further on the drafting fill. So that now means we've worked an extra half. I can just just see it. it's just given a really nice subtle extra um, depth and saturation to our colours in each of those. So one thing I'm going to just show briefly, I'm only going to do it on the film. No, we'll do it on, let's just do it on the light fast um, of both or of, of the reverse. Let's just flip it over. I just want to show you how you can drop the tone. Um, again, I'll demonstrate this more in a separate video. So, I've got black. Let me just zoom in here. And what I'm going to do is come around this bottom area. So I'll add a little hint, extra. Depth just around this bottom edge. And I'm doing it over both sides. So we'll do it where it just comes up. Exactly the same over on the dual R. And this is just a way of working. Can you see how bright this is? How intense it is on the side that you're working. But when we flip it over, what it's going to do is just add a lovely amount of tonal value. I could do this a lot slower, a lot, a lot smoother and more accurate but we want to just for the purpose of this demo it's just to show you the effect okay so i'm gonna flip that over i could add white around the top as well and that would really dramatize so can you see there now so there's there's the reverse of the application when we flip it over, can you see now it's just given us that extra depth 
to it almost gives it make it like a 3D sphere now rather than just a flat circle with some colouring. Okay. So that's laid out, side by side comparison of the two. I think that gives a really, really um good basic side by side. And I can see here the the, the Durala is actually a little bit brighter in colour than the film, which almost makes me feel it's a little bit more opaque, less trans, um, translucent, transparent. Um, but when we hold them side by side, they didn't seem to. But now I've started adding pigment on and I've got them working on them side by side. They do look slightly different there. So the next thing we're going to do is just come into these, each of them, with... Um, we're going to come in with a mono eraser and also our blade. And we're just going to see how well side by side each one works with this, a couple of sub blah, a couple of subtraction techniques that was a bit of a mouthful okay so i'm going to come back in with my mono razor and my slice ceramic blade to demonstrate that next okay so i've got my mono razor i've got my slice craft knife i've just got a little brush here just for brushing away pigment a little dusting brush so we'll zoom in And then we will come in on one part of each circle with our eraser and then our knife. I'm just going to get a tiny bit of glassine under my hand because this can get my hand a little bit messy otherwise. Okay, right, so more eraser first of all. I'm going to come, just try and come up through and cut some lines through with my eraser. Now what it will do is, because we've got some pigment on the reverse, it will lift away and show that pigment on the reverse. Now I don't have any pigment. Oh, I do actually. We put pigment down all the way back around, didn't we? So that will cut out a nice line and it will just show through any pigment that's on the reverse. If I go on to reverse, I could lift that out and it will give us pure um, film with no pigment on. Let's just see how well this lifts out on this right hand side on the Duralar. Feels to be lifting away more easily than on the film. Now, my theory for that would be then that this pigment is sitting more on the surface than sinking down into any kind of tooth compared to the film itself. So let's try the same with our blade. So with the blade, I'm literally going to come in and I'm going to just texturize a little bit, lift away some of our pigment there. So you can see that's lifted away really nicely. So let's do exactly the same now on this side. Same. I'd say that's pretty much the same level of lift away. So application of pencil, different. Subtraction technique on those light fast, exactly the same. So I'd be quite happy that I can get very close effects um, using my subtraction techniques, using either the film or the Duralar. Um, without worrying, it's more the, it's the application. The amount of layers of pencil I can get down is not going to be as much on the Duralar as opposed to the draft and film. That's lifted away really nicely there. That's the polychromo, so it's lifted the polychromos away much more nice, much more nicely, <laughs> much nicer than um, the light fast. So the little light fast has just sunk into that tooth a little bit more, soaked in maybe, but the polychromos, that's given such a nice clean line as opposed to up here trying to lift away. A little bit more pressure. 
it's not lifted away quite as nicely as our polychromos. Maybe it's just because that's a smoother, softer pencil as opposed to the pigment here just lying a little bit tighter. So same again, let's just do some flicks away with our blade. Lovely. And same here. Absolutely fine. Works really, really well. So one last thing. We'll do exactly the same now down here with our prism colour just to see how well this eraser works to cut lift the prism colour off. really well. Ah, she says, it's just catching. I had to go over there two or three times because it was kind of catching um, and making, you just see there, it was just making little residue balls of pigments um, and catching. I wonder if it'll do the same over here. Yeah, it is. It's just catching and forming them into little balls, so you've just got to go back in and lift them out again. That's worked really nice, and I'm guessing this is just going to lift off easily as well. Yep. Just anything. I would say. Subtraction technique. The, um, zoom out. The subtraction te technique works better, as in the knife work and the eraser work, works better on the Duralar than on the film. But that's because I think the film has more tooth and it grips the pigment better. So my conclusion is that if you bought the Duralar by mistake, um, it's absolutely fine. It's the same... You can achieve the same effects with a subtraction technique. So basically if you're creating a portrait with fur, etc., you can use you know the same techniques with your knife, with uh, your eraser, any other any other lifting off tools that you want to use. But the difference is in the application process. You're gonna get much many more layers, many more consistent, even layers on drafting film than you are on the dura lot. You're going to get a slightly smoother lay down on and blendability on the drafting film compared to the dura lot. But as for lifting off techniques, the dura lot lifted off a tiny bit better than the actual film. So that's pretty much all I wanted to show you in this video. It was a direct, to show a direct side by side comparison. Other Parts of this series obviously show an in-depth look at the different types of films, including the black Dura Bright or Dura La and the white. Um, now the blade doesn't work as well on that black one as it does on this translucent one. And then we'll, we will show more in depth how to blend, how to use different materials on the film, and also how to use those subtraction techniques to create different effects. So I hope that this one has been of some use to you and any questions, please do shout. Thank you very much for watching. And if you haven't subscribed already, please do just hit the button down in that corner <laughs> and just hit subscribe to my channel. It does help it. Thank you very much.